question is, I'm sure you get asked a lot, is what's the funnest thing to do in Taiwan? In Taiwan, oh, that is a difficult question because if you like if you like water activities, you know, recently we, we were in surfing, there's windsurfing, there's a kite boarding, there's kite surfing, there's uh, there's a cannoning, river cannoning, which I the first time I did was actually in Switzerland. So everybody kind of associates, you know, Switzerland and yeah. New Zealand with like uh, extreme extreme sports, but Taiwan actually has a lot of things like that. Now, obviously, uh, for foodies, uh, I love to eat. There's tons of places to eat, and uh, Tainan obviously is a favorite. But I also just like going to the random alleys. You know, one of our favorite uh, chigami, which is like a type of noodle, is in this tiny little alley in in, in some you know little township of Tainan, uh, Taoyuan. And so, like, if you ask me how to get there, I wouldn't know how to repeat that. But, but uh, it's all the little, you know, little back streets. back streets. You know, because if you think about it, these people have been doing this, making the same dish for like 60 thirty, years, sixty, families, seven years. Yeah. yeah. And so, it's got to be good, yeah. right? Um, and uh, yeah, hiking, climbing, uh, biking. I think is an incredible thing that Taiwan has that we're only recently starting to tap. It's like it should there's, be. There's all these biking magazines and everything. Yeah, it's yeah, huge. and it's like you know, you know. I have to admit, like my ignorance. I didn't know that Giant was yeah. a Taiwanese brand. I thought, you know, growing up in the states, we all see Giants everywhere. You just kind of assume it's American. But then I find out it's a, it's a Taiwanese brand, and it, it kind of makes you proud. But it yeah. also makes you wonder, like, why aren't there more biking events here? So uh, I think from anything, like you know, we've actually gone hiking in the snow to you know diving in green islands right. uh, there's just lots of activities to do and with all the travel you've done around taiwan mm. and your t-shirt says i am taiwanese american yeah has that made you feel more taiwanese all the traveling and sort of getting yeah. down to your roots or yeah it really has i mean before i came to taiwan i had no idea what time was like really i thought it was either a building like you know a whole bunch of 101s yeah. or like what my dad would describe it as and it was like just rice paddies everywhere. Yeah. I didn't know that there was so much in between. Like you have so many beautiful mountains. Yeah. You know, the Turoko Gorge, and like I said, the surfing areas, the beaches of Kunting, and, the, and those are the famous areas. Like if you go to a place called Sima Kusu, it's like this village in the middle of nowhere in um, Shinzu County. And it's these Aboriginal groups who have lived with the land there for, for ages. Yeah. And you see that and you like, you, you can't not be proud, mm -hmm. you know? And so yeah, when, when my friends, you know, ask me, what are you doing in Taiwan? What's there? I, I'm very, very happy to tell them yeah. all these things about it. I'm always telling them to come here. And so when I go and I travel, I'm like, oh, I, I say now, actually, um, I'm American, but I, I'm from Taiwan. And they say, oh, I like to eat Thai food. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me, let me educate yeah. you about Taiwan. Yeah, I do find myself feeling, uh, I don't know if I could say more Taiwanese than American, but I do. I do feel more in touch with the Taiwanese side of that, Taiwanese American. Right. And one of the things you said was that uh, you don't have to be a travel TV show host to you know, have a fun job, but for those that want to get into TV hosting and that kind of thing, like what kind of tips would you give them? Well, you know, I, it's, it's really a serendipitous thing. Like, I really got so lucky. Like, I never planned that this would happen, yeah. that I would have a, you know, a travel show host. And um, I don't think there's really anything that you can do to prepare for it. You know, if you think about all those you know, experiences since when I was like two traveling. When I was doing that, I was doing it because I loved to travel. And I think no matter what you do, you should focus on what you do love. You know, it might not be as a travel. You love to travel, sure, that's great, but you don't necessarily have to end up being a travel show host to do yeah. traveling as your, sure. as your career. You can become a photographer, you can become a, a journalist, all sorts of things. So I encourage everybody, like people ask me this all the time, it's like, yeah, if there are auditions, go for it. You know, if you don't take that risk, then sure. then you've already lost that opportunity. Um, but don't bank on that either. You know, you should just focus on doing what you love now. Yeah. Um, and that will lead to great things, regardless of what it is in the future. It might be as a travel show host. It might be something even better. Okay. And finally, in your talk, you talked a lot about play and also finally inspiration, as in your grandmother. Yeah. But what would you, if you could, unlearn? Which yeah. is the other word. Like, what, what do you think you need to unlearn, or what would you unlearn? Yeah, tons of things. Um, you know, when when we were traveling, sometimes I think, for the for example, the first time I went to Ecuador, it was as a, a volunteer, and I I went there thinking, okay, I'm going to help, I'm going to give, I'm going to do all these things that they don't have. You know, and I got there with this kind of mentality. And then you get there, and you, yes, you are helping, you are, you're doing these things, but what you get from these people, it really humbles you, you know? I, I helped this little girl, and, and she wanted to give me a little present, and we're like, no, I don't take presents. 
and then she she just left. And then two hours later, she came back and gave me a, a papaya. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not allowed to accept presents, but you know, why don't we go back and I'll go back with your mom to say thank you and you know, you know, th you know, that's that. I figured out then that she walked two hours back and forth to give me this papaya. And you know, when you when you experience that, when you see that, and plus when you got to her house, there was nothing there. They had nothing but this papaya. Yeah. It really just like you want to break down in tears because they are giving you everything, and here you are thinking that you're giving them everything. Yeah. And I think that that was part of the unlearning process. When I travel, I unlearn all the time. You know, you're always you, just when you think you know yourself, or just when you think you know a place or a, a type of yeah. people or even a food, you go and, and meet somebody else who goes, uh uh, oh yeah, well how about this and this and this. And I, I think that's what I love about traveling. It's like. You, you are out of your, your element. You are out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So you're constantly being told what you don't know. Yeah. And I think that's the, a, a great thing about learning. So in a way, you're, you're learning, but you're also unlearning everything about yourself. Yeah. So you didn't take the papaya in the end. Well, we, we ended up eating it together and like <laughs> okay. stuffing our faces. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much.